The other day I watched Sailor Moon R, Promise of the Rose. It is an anime movie from 1993 that they re-released because Viz redubbed the entire series as well as Sailor Moon R, Promise for the Rose. Of the Rose? For the Rose? Doesn't matter. Now what this is, okay, so when you go into the theater, they first give you one of these envelopes. And I'm going to walk you through my entire experience before I review the movie. Now one of these envelopes will uh, have a bunch of stuff in it. I haven't opened this. Well, no, this is the one I opened. I have two of these because I saw it twice. And it had stuff like this. And I showed it on a, video, a YouTube video right before they told me not to record in the lobby. And after that, you go into the movie theater. <clears throat> which had about, I'd say there was close to a little over a dozen, maybe like 14, 15 people, including myself. The second time I saw it at 9 o'clock, there was about 20 of us. And this was like the first day. The, uh, okay, so before you see the movie, which started a few minutes late, there was this interview with the voice actors for Tuxedo Mask, Sailor Moon, and Fiore, which they kept saying, Fiole, Fiole. I'm like, oh, maybe he's Fiole because the L's and the R's, they're interchangeable? I don't know. But anyways, he's Fiore in the movie. But So you first have to watch that, and that seemed to take forever because you're like, oh, I just want to watch the movie, right? So you get to it, and you get it into a short, which some anime movies do that. They have... Which I didn't realize it was a short. I'm like, I don't remember this at all. So Sailor Moon, oh, sorry, uh, Usagi Tsukino and uh, small Usagi Tsukino, Chibiusa, <laughs> they um, are eavesdropping on these two girls talking about all the Sailor Senshi, or Sailor Guardians, if you will, or Sailor Scouts, if you're from the long, long ago, like myself. And they're just like, oh, well... This one has is this, and this one is that, and the entire time Usagi's like, talk about Sailor Moon. Why aren't you talking about Sailor Moon? <coughs> so this this is like an introduction to the entire show, and it goes on for, I don't know, could have been 20 minutes, felt like an eternity. I know these characters, it's recut footage of the anime. I really wish going into this that I had, got, uh, that I had watched the, all of the dub, because... There's times when they're overdubbing scenes that uh, from the old from the TV show that had lines to it, and you're like, oh, well, is that her talking, or is that the? Oh, okay, they're just talking over open lip flaps now. That's not confusing, because I'm used to the old original anime uh, dub, but whatever. So that goes on. Nothing really happens. It was a waste of 20 minutes, that I, or however long, that I saw twice. And then the movie happens. The movie happens, and let's see how to start this. They do that again, pretty much. They have to introduce every single senshi, and you're like, oh my god, I just saw 20 minutes of this. The only part that was good was the one about Sailor Venus and maybe Sailor Jupiter. But they do that again, but it's much shorter, which is why I don't think that the first two parts were even necessary. Just show the movie, right? So they're showing the movie, and it's as gay as I remember. See, Fio the whole basis is a homosexual alien comes down who used to be friends with Tuxedo Mask when he was a kid, and they promised, he promised Tuxedo Mask that he'd give him flowers. So he comes back to fulfill that promise, hence Promise of the Rose, and Sailor Moon's like, no, that's my boyfriend, and he's like, mm -hmm. so homosexual is totally breaking up the sanctity of underage uh, middle school girl dating high schooler, and they're like, oh, we're going to have to go up there and fight this dude. So they go and they fight him. There's a lot of crying, a lot more crying than I remember, actually. It's weird. Like, at the very end, I'm like, oh, bad guy's crying again. That's not awkward. Oh, oh, now they're crying, too. A lot of tears. A lot of... <laughs> and I don't want to give the entire movie away, but it is as gay as I remember, but there are more tears than I remember. 
It's weird, it's fun, it knows it's weird and fun, it embraces it and enjoys it, and when, damn it, when that wedding dress comes on, you know shit is about to get real. So, was it worth watching Sailor Moon R, Promise of the Rose? I've already seen this movie like 15 times, 20 times, with the original dub and the Japanese dub because they, Pioneer released it on DVD. So was it worth seeing it in theater? It was weird seeing it in theater, to be completely honest, because I have the Japanese voices in the back of my head. I have the American voices originally from the, in the back of my head. And I'm watching this, and I'm like, this is weird. It's like a half-remembered dream, you know? So... It was worth seeing Sailor Moon in theater. I never thought I'd see it. This was my least favorite of the movies. So even that, I'm like, they're putting this one in theater? I really hope it does well enough because the next two movies are a lot better. I can't remember the order, but there's this one, they're fighting a woman with red hair. Can't remember. There's a sword involved. That could be the last season, though. Um, there's another one where that I love, which is a special about Luna, and that one's really good. And there's another one that's like a special that's not really a movie. It's about Amy's first love. That one I remember a lot of because I'm like, why can't I see this? I will download it in 15 pieces and watch it on 56K modem. But it was weird watching this and watching it twice because, oh, the second time was hilarious. I was just laughing with my friend. We were like, oh, <laughs> oh man, they're crying again. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, why are they feeling more emotion than me, the uh, person watching the movie, you know? I, I love when they go and they're talking about the homosexuality of it all. And they're like, well, maybe Mamaru was in a relationship like that. Not that there's anything wrong with that. They actually say the line from Seinfeld. Not that there's anything wrong with that. No, there are two people in my school who are in a relationship like that. It's fine. Oh. The homosexuality of Sailor Moon. But yeah, I overall enjoyed watching it. Uh, however, this animation came out in 1993. It is dated. There are some... It looks good for what it is. There are some um, visual things in the background. Some scratchiness to it that you see when it's supposed to be all pumped full of one color or another. But you don't really notice it throughout the movie. Um... There were three times where there was this loud clunk pop sound that um, shouldn't have been there. I really hope it's not on the Blu-rays. Um, when I was watching the credits, there's this one point where it jumps back into the credits at the very, very end. And I'm like, I don't know what to do with that. It's a weird part of the experience. I didn't see the first time because I had to go buy another ticket because I did this stuff legally. Because I really <laughs> want this... Uh, the rest of the movies in theater. And there was a few times there was some color distortion where I guess it's from the original version, of course, so there's nothing they can do, but I noticed it on Sailor Venus, when her uh, alter ego, Monaco, yeah, that's right, um, was running, her bow, parts of it flash red and white, red and white, red and white, when it's all supposed to be red that in that part. And it's a very small part, it's not the overall bow, but it's noticeable and it's distracting. Also, the line work in this movie, you can tell that it is not on par with what was there during that time period. I mean, The Little Mermaid was in the 80s. This is the mid, this is the early 90s, and it does not look as crisp. You can see the fine lines, but that's anime for you, but it tells, it shows you the difference of watching this on a standard definition television screen or even DVD on a smaller screen and watching it blown up. Then there's stuff like, oh, well, of course the trees have shading, or rather they have a shadow in the sky. That's because it's two layers of, um, that, and yeah, it's normal stuff for television, but you're like, this is a movie. So it doesn't have quite the polish you expect from a movie, but overall it was okay. And what do I think of the movie overall? It's okay. You don't have to see it. 
If you're a fan of anime as well as old school anime, please see this in theater. It needs your love. Maybe more so than Dragon Ball Z or Dragon Ball Super does. That being said, it was like a B for me. It was okay experience. More or less would have been more in this situation. They made me wait too, too long. And by that I mean not just in the theater, but for years and years and years. And I've seen this stuff already. Hopefully they'll make another Sailor Moon movie that's brand new. Um, maybe live action. Ghost in the Shell is going to do probably a lot of money next March with their whitewashing. So maybe we'll get a multicultural cast for Sailor Moon. Probably not. But hey, that was my opinion of Sailor Moon R, A Promise of the Rose, or Promise for the Rose. I, I really should have looked that one up. Sailor Moon R, the movie. I was wrong. <laughs> Anyways, that's my opinion. Tell me what you thought in the comments below. I will catch you all later. And hey, guys, keep watching anime.